Okay. Yes, we are here today uh, to talk about place value. Place value seems to strike fear in the hearts of a lot of us homeschool moms. I know that it did for me when I was first starting out and my kids were younger. Uh, in his last video, Randy talked about, in, he encouraged us to, to face our fears. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to face our fears about place value. Place value is one of those things that I talk to homeschool moms about quite often. And as I was getting ready for this video, I thought through some of the things that I, um, I carry on a conversation with these moms about uh, pretty often, actually almost, well, I'd say every week, every week I have a conversation with at least one or two moms about uh, place value. So I actually wrote down some of the the concerns that they voice and I came up with the three top ones and so I'm going to actually address those today. Um, number one is place value is complicated and I am just not sure I understand it myself well enough to explain it to my child. So that's number one. Number two is um, my kid is going to struggle with it because I can't explain it well enough. So they're going to struggle with it and I'm not going to know how to help and we're going to end up having to keep going back to it and I just don't think I can do that. And then number three is kind of built on top of that is they're concerned that they're, they are going to pass on their own confusion to their child and their child is not going to have the foundation that they need to build on. So those are the three things. And they're all, if you'll notice, they're all like started and founded in the fear of not being able to do it, not being able to succeed. So really we can call it the fear of failure. So we're going to take the time today to smack that fear with some truth, okay? So number one truth is place value may be complicated, but if we take it one step at a time, we'll conquer it, okay? That's that's the, the most important thing to learn in basically everything in life, right? If we take it one step at a time, don't get ahead of ourselves, but we keep it simple, okay? So my suggestion is this. If you are mom and you're just really not sure if you have the um, concept down for yourself, then I would suggest that you go to the link that I've provided for the uh, Math Antics Place Value video and just watch that a few times. You don't need to understand everything there is to know about place value to teach the first step, right? So if you understand the first step, then you can teach the first step. So that's the wonderful thing about homeschooling is that we get to learn right along with our kids, okay? So I encourage you to watch that. And then after that, I'm going to turn my page here. Um, I want you to remember that place value is to math what phonics is to reading. Okay, both take time and both advance in steps. Okay, so both of them advance in steps. You take one step at a time. Place value is to math as phonics is to reading. This is extremely important, okay? A lot of people think that having to go back and review is a sign of failure. It's not, okay? Needing to review is not a sign of failure. It's not a sign of failure of, of your failure or of your kids. It is just not, okay? Review is a necessary, it's a necessary um, part of learning, okay? You will be learning and teaching this concept for a really long time. 
So kind of get used to it. You're going to be going forward one step at a time for a very, very long time because place value does not, it's not a one-time concept that you teach. It is something that you just keep going back and back and back and building on it. If you have to go back and review, it does not mean you failed the first time. It does not mean that your child failed the first time. It just means that you need to keep going back and reviewing as part of the learning process. So um, let's talk a little bit about the Place Value Village. And I actually wrote quite a bit about teaching Place Value in the teacher's uh, Math Teacher's Companion. So I'm really excited for you guys to get that into your hands because that's going to be a very, very helpful tool. Uh, I also, I go into depth on um, the, the process of teaching it and the process of learning it and what is actually happening in the child's brain when they're, when they're building on that concept. And I also just give some really good practical uh, tips and games to be able to reinforce that concept. And that's all included in that teacher's companion. So um, many of you probably have already built your Place Value Village, so you know it's pretty simple. It's, there's nothing uh, that is super complicated. It's simply cutting out the houses. You can color and laminate them. You can put them on um, anything from boxes to big cups. I mean, it really, really just is very, very simple. Masterbooks is, is homeschool curriculum for the real world, and that applies to this too. You do not have to go out and buy big fancy containers or baskets or anything unless you want to. You don't have to. And that goes for the uh, counting objects too. I suggest beans because it's those are really super cheap. A lot of people have beans just in their cupboard already. Uh, and they're also really easy for little fingers to manipulate. So that's why I suggest beans. You don't have to use beans. You could use whatever you want as long as they're small objects that your child can pick up and, and move around. <coughs> so any small item, it's, it doesn't matter. We had um, our two oldest ones, we used beans a lot. Um, for our two younger ones, somebody uh, was done homeschooling, so they gifted us a whole big, huge box of math manipulatives. And in that was a base tin set, and um, which we never really used. Um, but there was also a big box of um, those connecting um, Unifix cubes, I think they're called. But anyway, they're like multiple colors and they just like click onto each other. And they loved that. So we used those. My two younger ones used to those. Um, so, yep, it does not matter what kind of objects you use. It doesn't matter what your place value village looks like. It can be fancy, it can be simple, it can be attached to um, yogurt containers or cups or boxes, does not matter, doesn't matter. But I, one thing I do suggest that you do is um, have a basket or a bin that is specifically for your place value village. So everything stays in one place and you don't have to keep um, you know, reprinting things because you, you lost something or something got ripped and um, torn or whatever. So um, the, that's the two important things about Place Value Village. I also did um, put the link to my tutorial that I made quite um, actually a few years ago. Um, I put a link to that in the um, description of this video so you can easily go and see that. Um, I did want to address one thing that um, I, I address it in the uh, teacher's companion, but I also want to address it here. I have heard so many times uh, parents saying to me that their kids just hate anything to do with place, learning place value. And I understand that. I had two that absolutely, I, well, if I let them, they would have thrown a fit every time I said, okay, guys, let's review our place value. They just didn't like it. They didn't like the feeling of not being able to master it and move on and not have to do it anymore. But here's the thing. Our kids need to learn that their whole entire life is going to be full, absolutely brim full of things that they are not going to be able to master and move on. That's not the way life is. 
So I'm going to read you the paragraph that I wrote about this because it's concise and I, I just think it says exactly what I need to say today. Um, says, if your student is, is balking over the learning of this concept, I, ex I would explain to them that they are building a skill that takes a while to fully construct in the mind. It is most certainly not a one time and you have it type of concept. Actually, very few things in life are. Uh, as their cognitive ability grows, so will the understanding of this concept. So when they're little, when you're first starting out, when they're first learning um, that there's a ones place and a tens place, that's where they are. That's where their brain is, is able to understand that. But as they grow and as their brain grows and starts to develop more and to actually um, become able to understand more complex uh, concepts, so will their understanding of place value. They, they will eventually understand the billions and trillions. They will understand the decimal place. They will understand all these things, but it starts very small. And they need to learn that it starts small. So many things in life start small. So they have to be just simply encouraged to try their best and to keep reviewing. Because remember, reviewing is is so important. It is not a sign of failure. There, when I first started um, really, really digging in and making sure that my older kids, and they were in middle school at this age, um, at this time, when I first started really digging in and making sure that they understood the concepts that their math book was trying to teach them, especially my son, he did not want to stop and go back to the beginning. But I I had him go back to the beginning and show me what he actually understood. And I realized there were gaping, gaping holes in his actual understanding. So I had him start, start at the beginning and build on that. And I just encouraged him, just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's okay to go back and review. It's okay to go back and, and build on the things that you have learned before. That's what life is, is it, that's what it's about. I mean, all of us, even as adults, we, without even thinking about it, we think of the things that we already know and we add to that. When we learn something new, we make those connections and, hey, I just learned something new. You know the old saying, you learn something new every day. Well, you can't learn something unless there's something to attach it to. The brain doesn't, doesn't work that way. So what we're doing is laying a foundation for them to build on later. So in closing, when you as an adult are, are learning a new skill or a concept, you're constantly, constantly thinking about what you know, okay? That is what our kids are doing. But not only are they, are they doing that, they are, um, they're realizing that they really don't know everything. My girls and I were just talking this morning about the fact that kids go through a stage where they realize that they're not the center of the universe. That can be depressing for them. And that's kind of what we're doing with our homeschooling and our teaching. And place value is, is a huge one because that is one of the absolute first foundational concepts that our kids are learning. So they are learning to be good with learning. They're learning to have a good attitude about learning. But that's kind of kind of difficult when they are um, in that stage of everything is about me. So it's one of those things that we have to help them through, okay? Um, some of you might have thought that I had forgotten to pray. I did not forget to pray. I am actually going to pray at the close of this one because I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of times that our biggest, um, our biggest, I don't know what to call it, our biggest struggle, our biggest enemy, our biggest um, thing that we face is fear. In Ephesians 6, it talks about how we are struggling, um, but not against flesh and blood. And guys, I understand when you are homeschooling, sometimes you feel like you're fighting flesh and blood, your own flesh and blood but that's not true. So I want to encourage all of us because this is an area of our schooling, our homeschooling, our kids that can be a really big struggle and fear can hit us really hard when it comes to, comes to concepts like place value. 
I want to pray that we remember that we aren't fighting against flesh and blood or, or teaching place value. We, we have an enemy who wants to render us absolutely useless because he knows what we're doing actually matters for eternity. And if any way that he can hit us with insecurity and just use our own insecurity against us, he's going to. So that's my prayer today. And I'm just going to pray right now. I'm going to end this video. And thanks again, guys, for being so patient and, and putting up with my, my uh, delay here. Okay. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for Mondays. And thank you for helping me figure out my technical issues and helping uh, this computer to work well. Lord, we do fight. We do fight fear and insecurity. And we know that you know that we fight that. Lord, thank you for your promise that when we come and ask in full faith for wisdom, you give it to us. And you don't criticize us for needing it. And you don't hold our humanness against us. I ask you to pour out an immense and abundant measure of grace and mercy and faith on these women and whoever else is watching. Lord, we need you. We cannot do anything without you. Seriously cannot do it. And Lord, you're the one who created the whole entire universe. You know the number system. You created it. It is a reflection of part of your character. Help us to remember that. Help us to keep our eyes on you and help us not to be afraid, but to take one step at a time and just trust you with the rest of the picture. Just ask you to... Uh, Bless all of these women and me too, as I homeschool my own daughter. In your precious name, amen.